Welcome to SilverPop's webinar, Email Marketing Metrics Benchmarks, How Do You Compare? We are pleased to be joined today by Lauren McDonald, SilverPop's Vice President of Industry Relations. Today, Lauren will reveal insightful email metrics, broken down by top, average, and bottom quartile performers, as well as by industry and geographic locations. The results will shed light into areas beyond the traditional metrics, such as click-to-open rate, clicks-to-clicker, opens-to-opener, message size, and complaint rates. And to help you turn this data into actionable plans for improvement, Lauren will also share tips for leveraging benchmark data into opportunities for more resources, bigger budgets, and better results. Before I turn it over to Lauren, I just wanted to give you a couple of reminders. If you would like to tweet along with us today, please use the hashtag SPOPWebinar. There should be time available at the end for questions, so please chat any questions you would like to ask directly to the host. And finally, keep in mind that a copy of the presentation will be sent to you early next week. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Lauren. Lauren? Great. Thanks, Stacey, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. And um, in addition to being a, a webinar today, many of you probably, if you have kids, this is the uh, uh, first day of school for my uh, seventh grader. Yesterday was the first day of school for my uh, older daughter in college and stuff. So I know many of you probably have just uh, come back from dropping off your kids to school. And so I think that's kind of fitting with today's theme about getting educated around lots of numbers and what to do with them. So. Um, let's go ahead and, and dive in. I'm going to start off with this quote, why compare yourself with others? No one in the entire world can do a better job of being you than you. And I could not find a, a source for that. But wh what I love about this quote is really the idea that, that benchmarking, you know, as, as Stacy talked about, it's really, you know, sort of, it's, it's all about you and what you do with the data. And that's really what I'm going to ultimately, hopefully get across today. But as marketers, we often ask ourselves, you know, how do we compare, right? And I think that's, you know, that's kind of an okay question, but there's really, a, you know, sort of a much better question, uh, and that's how do we improve? Um, and, and so not to start off on a negative, but I think, you know, the, again, the message I want to get across here today is, is that benchmarks in and of themselves are really kind of worthless unless you use them to take your marketing program to another level. And so that's really the point is, is that so many people, marketers are, are always asking for benchmarks, asking for how to compare it, everything like that. But then, you know, once you get this, this data, you know, that's great, it's wonderful, it's nice. What do you actually do to it? How do you actually apply it to your program? And so that's kind of the, the end of my sermon for, for today and, and, and beginning of the webinar. So that being said, you know, so of course, what is the number one most asked question in, in, in email marketing? And you all know what the answer to that question is. It's of course, what's the average uh, e email open rate, right? I've been, I've been speaking on email since uh, about 2001 and back then it was the most popular question and it, and it still is today, right there along with kind of what's the best best time to send email and, and similar questions. So no matter what I say, it's still people want to know these sort of uh, the, these basic metrics questions. And so you asked, and today we reveal, and really again the point is, is sort of as, as part of this first part around the metrics then is sort of how do you stack up? How does your individual program stack up and, and compare to um, other sort of peer programs, if you will? So. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is first go through some, some process so you actually understand what in sort of be behind the numbers, who we actually, uh, you know, where we got the data from and, and how we're slicing and dicing it in, in sort of multiple ways so you understand all of that from a level setting perspective. I think I'm going to go through not all of the metrics that we, we, we actually um, pulled and, and, and analyzed, but just because of, of time. Um, considerations. I can't go through all of them. I'm going to do some selected ones. And then, you know, as, as I mentioned, some just some quick ideas and thoughts around. So what, now that you have some of this data and you'll get it with a report, what do you actually do with it? How can you actually use it? And then we'll close with just um, uh, some, some quick notes and open it up to Q&A. So let's go ahead and dive in on, on sort of the background. So what we did was was we the first thing we did is we actually went to our client, Silver Pop client based around the world and, and we asked for their, their permission to opt in. So that's the first thing. Then of course we once we got that we ran the script, worked with some really smart engineers who ran the script across 
um, our Engage platform and pulled all of that data and then I sliced it and diced it and organized it in, in these different ways that I'm going to walk through that hopefully makes it more meaningful and brings it down to you know, kind of a narrower level so that you can benchmark hopefully at a level that, 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 that's closer to um, who you are as, as an organization. So what does that, that look like? So that ended up being um, 1,124 different brands across 20 different countries throughout the world. We, um, we ran the data across, in essence, five quarters. So all of 2011 and then the first quarter of 2012. And one of the reasons we wanted to do that is, is, to, is to go back so that going forward in the future, we can actually compare sort of year, o year over year, sort of quarters to quarters and things like that. So we wanted to kind of go back and, and look at sort of, um, you know, sort of a broad uh, and, and a bit of a sort of lengthy bit of, of, of time frame, but also over, you know, in essence, multiple, multiple quarters. And there was sort of no magic to the five quarters, but in this case, I think it's sort of the, being that it might level out any sort of variance in, you know, uh, holiday seasons and, and, and things like that by kind of, uh, you know, meshing it all together. But again, in the future, we'll be uh, actually being able to sort of slice it um, so you could compare, for example, the holiday season of 2013 with the holiday season of 2012 and that type of thing. We also looked at a number of different industries, and then we sliced the data by um, three primary uh, sort of global uh, uh, geographic regions, the U.S., Canada, and EMEA being Europe, Middle East, uh, and, and Africa. And as you might expect, the sort of the, you know, the majority of that was um, – was was in Europe and, and and the UK. So, from the industry perspective, again, um, what we did is we we uh, matched up um, the, the sort of the, the client data and put them into different um, sort of traditional uh, industry categories. So you can see here everything from from charities and consumer products to retail to uh, computer hardware and software and education and media and the like, and then also, um, you know, sort of corporate services and healthcare and industrial manufacturing and, and, and things like that. So broad range, we, we if there was sort of uh, industries where we didn't have sort of enough responses, we didn't, we didn't include that, we wanted to keep it to sort of a, um, a, a solid minimum so that, that the numbers were um, really trustworthy. So all of that said and done, you know, one of the one of the big things that I've I've been doing for years and, and sort of really harp on, harp on and written many kind of columns and articles about this is is one of the problems that that I have and I hope after today you have as well with a lot of these these benchmarks that even we and 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 other companies do is is so many of them just look at average and and as I've always said, do you, you know, is that really what you want to compare your program? To, right? Do you really want to be average, right? So one of the things that that, that I've done with with the metrics and and I think really, um, it, it, hopefully you'll 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 take away today is sort of the sort of the value and thinking about looking at sort of in benchmarking yourselves against the top performers and and not just the average. So sort of the the last slice of 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 all this just kind of the the data that we have in the report is that I've sliced it by top quartile bottom quartile, um, mean, which is just a fancy name for average, and, and median. And I'm going to go through the definitions of those now so everybody understands it as I walk through the data. So quartiles simply meaning that you take all of the data and then you slice it, in this case, by um, the, the top 25%, right? So you basically take the, all of the numbers and put the, the top 25% um, and then average those numbers within that top, top 25%. So it's, a, it's the sort of the average of, of the top and the same with, with the bottom, um, the, the bottom 25% performers, and then you average that. And that's how we've come up with the, the, the in essence, simple way to think about it is the top performers and the, and the bottom performers. Mean again, um, you know, like I said, is just a, a fancy name for for average. So it simply means we've taken all of the data um, and then divided it by the sort of the number of, of of inputs, the number of metrics, and that's how you get average and median. And again, apologize if everybody knows all this. Just want to make sure that that it's clear to everybody what what we're talking about today. And and median is sort of the the mathematical um, midpoint of all of it. So it's it's different from 
uh, from average. And just again, from sort of to keep the slides clean today, I'm, I'm not going through the, the median, but that is in the in the report. And one of the reasons that, that I like including the median as well is sometimes in some metrics, you know, you, when you look at the median versus the mean or, or average, you can see that there's there's definitely some some differences and stuff. So in some cases, you know, you may want to apply um, sort of the, the median number versus the average number when you're thinking about that that kind of a comparison. So what did we look at? So in the um, as you can see here on the screen, the the um, the metrics highlighted in blue are are the ones that I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through and kind of you know give some teaser numbers today and on this webinar um, just again from sort of a, a time sake perspective but um, all of them you see here on the list are ones that are actually in the the report that that you will be receiving so those metrics are open rate uh, opens per opener click through rate click to open rate clicks per clicker hard bounds soft bounds delivery rate uh, unsubscribe rate uh, abuse or complaint rate and and mailing size all right, so if that wasn't a long enough buildup, let's go ahead and, and dive in. But again, I, hopefully that sort of will make everything uh, make sense uh, going forward. So obviously let's start with open rates. So, but before, again, you thought I was going to give you a number, but before I dive into that number, again, open rates are one of the most misunderstood um, metrics, uh, I, I think, in the in the history of, of metrics. So I think it's important for stopping and spending a couple minutes to clarifying it. And not all, um, uh, you know, service providers actually define it the same way. So it's 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 again, it's even more important to understand how we at Silverpop define them. So when you're looking at these the the numbers, you 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 can understand if if the the provider you're using um, defines them differently. That you have that lens to look at through. So the first aspect of it is is that if you have a, an HTML email and it has the, the, the tracking image in it that, that you virtually you know, every email service provider does, it adds that, that image that loads. Um, so when somebody opens and hits that server, that's how this sort of tracks, it's an open. So if it's an HTML email and the track image, tracking image uh, hits the server and calls, then that's considered an open. If you send out a text mail, a text email just as part of your program, as part of your multi-part um, emails, um, if in Silverpop world we call this a derived open, if if the recipient actually clicks on a link in the email, right, um, then we call that an open. The idea being that even though it's technically not an open, whereas the, you know there's no um, tracking pixel because you can't put a, a, a tracking pixel in a text email, but the idea if somebody clicks on a link, that's in essence you know an inferred or what we refer to as a derived open. So there's there's that aspect of it. Thirdly. Um, images off, and this is often uh, this in preview panes or something that a lot of people get get confused about. So if if the uh, if somebody is you know using Gmail or Yahoo or something like that, and their images are off by by default, and they open the email, that does not count as an open, right? Doesn't matter if they open it 50 times, it's not going to count as an open if that if if those images are are, are blocked, right? Unless Again, like the text email, unless you actually, the recipient actually clicks on, on that link. Again, we refer to that as that derived open. And lastly, probably the most misunderstood part about, about open rates and tracking them is, is the preview pane. And, it, and it's really simple. It just comes down to whether the image loads or not. Right, so regardless if somebody is using, let's say, Outlook or something like that or some other um, client and um, uh, images are not blocked, right? So they don't technically actually click and open the email, but if they're looking at the their email or scrolling through their inbox and they're on your email long enough and images are enabled, so even though, again, they haven't, the recipient hasn't necessarily opened it, um, that's going to count at, as an open if, if that image loads. So it can be kind of squishy because somebody might be scrolling through really quickly and so maybe that, that image doesn't have enough time to load or, or maybe it does and stuff. But that's real kind of the key point is, is that, that it is an open if the images load in, in while the recipient's viewing their, their preview pane. All right, now hopefully that didn't confuse anybody and you're, you're now more clear than ever on, on the tracking of open. So let's go ahead and dive in. And so of course, the first thing is the average email open rate. So across the client base that we looked at, 
it was it was basically 20%, 21 or 20.1%. 20 and that's pretty much consistent with um, numbers that I've seen from from other uh, other providers and stuff over the last so, several years in that kind of low low 20% range. But again, you know, the when you're comparing against other reports and stuff like that, the thing you have to understand is everybody has different client bases and maybe even different ways of of calculating it. So to try to compare one benchmark study to somebody else's benchmark study. Um, you know, it can't could be a little bit like comparing apples and apples and oranges. Um, but the really the sort of the important thing I think to to take away on on this slide is is the top quartile, right? So you see here that um, the the top performers, the top 25% of our clients uh, th that participated in the study are seeing more than a double open rate than than the average 2x you know almost 44% versus 20% so pretty significant and then on the flip side you're looking at about 8% for for the bottom bottom quartile which is um you know less the less than uh, almost what a third less than than the average ones and significantly less than than the top um, performers. Now, as many of you know, I'm personally not a big fan of the open rate, and I'll, and I'll talk about um, a little bit more about that in a second when I get to um, the clicked open rate. But here's just a, a quick flavor if, if you're interested in sort of by different um, select industries and the like. Um, here are a couple of examples of uh, uh, the verticals and both the sort of the average and the top quartiles. So the interesting thing on, on this slide is you look at, the, at, at banks and financial services, you can see that they're a little bit higher than, than some of the uh, other industries like retail and, and leisure and travel and, and the like, both on sort of average and pretty significantly on top quartile, they're heading towards 50% there versus retail on 30%, uh, you know, at kind of 30%. And I guess one of the the the, uh, the assumptions I have around that that I feel pretty pretty strongly about is you think about some of the these industries that are performing a little bit higher versus the ones that are lower, and you think about typically the types of emails that those companies are sending. And you know, retail and travel and stuff tend to be very promotion oriented and very you know sort of aggressive often high volume and you know three four five times a week and stuff where you know in the case of banks and financial services and stuff they're they're typically your bank that you're working with and it's you know account uh, statements and things like that so I think there's an inherent you know sort of bias and, and advantage to kind of higher performance on 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 some of these industries and and then particularly media when you think about you know, as all of us on on this call, if you're a, um, a marketer subscribing to you know, marketing Sherpa or, or marketing Profs or you know other kind of marketing programs that that you want that content, you're you're very interested in, so you're much more likely probably to open it than um, you know the sort of the 50 um, promotions you get each day, that type of thing. Um, secondly, and, and 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 I find really kind of interesting is is computer software is 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 also very high and really just sort of off the charts when it comes to the to the top top quartile performers. You can see here, 55 percent. So more than half of people are are opening uh, those emails. And again, this this is going to be really kind of a theory. I don't have you know sort of hard facts on onto what's driving that. But again, I think in a lot of cases that you know, you're subscribing, the recipient is subscribing, both on the B2B and B2C side, um, to, you know, sort of communications from a from a, a software company because you're using their their software, right? And and so a lot of times it's going to be information about, you know, upgrades or just, you know, how to get more out of your software, things like that. But I think also, and particularly on the B2B side, uh, you know, I know certainly a lot of our clients have moved very aggressively in in you know, in using their the the marketing automation technology, and and are driving sort of the, these emails increasingly based on you know behavior interaction and things like that. So a lot of it is, is that the you know kind of the the cadence and the volume of the emails is going out, uh, oftentimes almost at the sort of the you know the request, the behavior of the recipient as opposed to just sort of pounding out you know four or five emails a week and stuff. But again, that that's really kind of uh, theory on, on my part. And again, you look at some of the other industries and you can see they're significantly lower than, than, the, than the average. All right, so um, let's move over to click rates. I'm going to walk through click-through rates, click-to-open rate, and clicks-to-clicker. 
So on, on the click-through rate, um, we're seeing uh, about 5%, 5.2% across our client base. And um, again, I think, you know, as somebody who's been monitoring and, and producing reports like this over about the last 10 years and stuff, it, it's interesting that the click-through rates haven't seemed to sort of move move very much. They've, you know, typically have been in this 3 4 5% um, you know, average rate for for about the last 10 years and stuff. So it seems sort of like, you know, the the, the recipient's uh, appetite to click has has or the, you know, the quality of, of of marketers has been pretty consistent around around the click-through rate over over, you know, sort of many years. Again, sort of, you know, perhaps the more interesting aspect when you think about how your program is comparing to other people is you know a 3x uh, performance of those top call top quartile performers so almost a 17 percent uh, you know click through rate among among the the, the top performers and less than one percent for the bottom bottom performers you know pretty um, pitiful if you will if I can say that but again I think that you know the, the 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 thing I want you to take away on this slide is is really that that 3x right so if you're you know, if your click-through rate is at you know six or seven percent, you're probably feeling pretty good right now because you're you know above above the average. But you know, how good should you really feel? And obviously, it depends on different industries and things like that. But but you know, even though you're doing better than the average, you still have a lot of room and, and potential to to increase uh, you know sort of click-through rate up up to really that that top performing group. So that being said, again, let's let's take um, some slice of a couple of, of, of different industries. And again, I'm going to uh, you know focus a bit on on media this time. As you can see here, they're they're really sort of off the charts. So their their averages, as you can see, is kind of picking up the overall um, average across multiple industries at almost nine percent versus you know two three uh, kind of percent range for for many of the other industries. But the the thing that obviously really stands out here. Um, is the is the top quartile performance right at at almost 32 percent right? I mean that's you know think about that 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 click through rate is is you know almost you know it's a third higher than than the average open rate that most companies are are, are getting. So it's just um, you know uh, amazing amazingly high. And I think that you know that the, the real sort of the key the thing to to take away from this. Is is you know sort of why is that what it, what is driving that and and my theory assumption that I feel pretty strongly about is is it's all about content right that that in this case again when you kind of look at those different the, many of these different industries you know many of them are very pro, sort of promotional oriented versus content and when you think about you know media that most of what uh, oftentimes they're sending. Are are the you know sort of these these newsletters like we get in the, in the marketing industry and they're they're designed and structured such that there's typically little teasers of you know 20 words 50 words or whatever and multiple uh, articles that are teased to you and so you you get that that teaser and you want to um, you want to uh, dial through. Um, so um, the uh, next thing is. Oops, sorry here. Um, had a brief distraction that that uh, uh, got me off track there, and then it wouldn't click through. So the next slide um, uh, is is again looking at a, at a couple of different uh, industries. In in this case, um, uh, again the uh, vertical uh, breakdown here. You can see computer software, right? Again, a little bit like the uh, uh, media publishers, if you will, at, at almost 9% on the average, and, and in this case, not quite as off the charts as, as media publishers, but about 30% on, on the top quartiles. And again, my my theory on that is, is is pretty similar to what I mentioned about the open rate and that, that a lot of these companies have content and things like that, maybe about your existing uh, software um, subscription or services and things like that, or sort of tips and, and, and those kinds of things. So very education very educational focus as opposed to just promote 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 um, as well as the other idea of, of just kind of being um, smarter with kind of using lead management tools and things like that all right so click to open rate so um, many of you or some of you may have seen my uh, silver pop blog post from yesterday where I talked about click to open rate as 
um, really one of the sort of the gems of uh, of email metrics. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan, I know many of you are as well, of the click to open rate or what, what we refer to in the product as effective rate. Um, I think those are the only two names that I've typically heard it referred to, wait, but I'm just going to go with sort of the, the, the more sort of common term of, of click to open rate. And what, what click to open rate um, uh, is, is, is really simply the, the unique clicks divided by the unique opens, right? And so what, what I love about the, the click to open rate versus the open rate is what the, the, the click to open rate by and large removes uh, not all, but but much of the bias that that is inherent in the open rate. So the inherent the the open rate basically measures the, the sort of the trust and the brand value of your from name, and the uh, your creative abilities of of your subject line, right? So the, anybody can ma manipulate open rates, right? And, and and you see that every day in your inbox, right? A lot of marketers. Uh, or spammers, whatever, will 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 you know do things with their subject line to to drive opens, right? And yes, it's important to get people to to obviously to open your email, but but opens in and of themselves don't really tell the story. They don't tell how successful your 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 program has been. It doesn't tell if you've actually made you know driven people to actually take action. And that's what I like like about the clicked open rate because what it does is it says. Of the people that have actually opened our email, how many of those people then were, were we able to um, drive to take action, right? So what it really does is it's, it's, it's I refer to it as kind of a, a, like a diagnostic metric, and that what it, what it helps you understand is how effective is the layout, the design, the, the copy, the our calls to action, you know, our buttons, uh, if it, you know the our uh, the, the the flow of the email and and things like that, and if if images are off, you know, did we design it to work well in you know preview panes and images and off and stuff. So it's really it's all about the ability of what you've put into the message body to the, the drive those people um, to to take an action, right? So it 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 not a hundred percent, but it but by and large. It sort of segments out. Okay, we we got this really great subject line that made people open it. Sort of puts that off to the side and says, okay, now, you know, that we've got those openers. Now let's see how did our actually message, you know, sort of content actually deliver on making people take that action. And so that's a sort of long-winded approach, but I think it I can't speak sort of highly enough about sort of the value of of the click to open rate over, over uh, particularly the open rates. If you're not using it, I I, I highly recommend that you do. And so when you when you look at these numbers, um, in in sort of simplest form, um, you know, so the average uh, across our client base participating in the program, you know, we're seeing one out of five people in essence that that opened the email, clicked at least once. But the the top uh, quartile, the top performers, we're seeing double that, right? Basically, two out of five people that 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 opened their email then then clicked it. So pretty significant, a doubling in in that sort of uh, click through rate of of people that opened her. And then again, on sort of the bottom side, um, you know, about um, uh, you know about a third or so of of the average, at a little bit under seven percent. So clicks per clicker. So this is kind of one of those, uh, along with opens per opener, which I did not have time to sort of uh, go go through today. But you'll, maybe you'll get the idea from sort of clicks per clicker, is that that for different industries can can be kind of interesting. But you can see here how close the numbers are. So what it, the value of clicks per clicker, which really just says of of again of the people that actually clicked on an email. So it removes the people that that, that didn't click. Of those that clicked. Um, how many times did, did did they click on the email? And what that's really sort of getting at is 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 again sort of the the amount of uh, content uh, or you know if you're a retailer or something like that sort of products and things. And what in essence is what it's saying is is that you have more than one uh, aspect of, of of content or product or offer or an email that's that's of interest. And and that may or may not be a good thing. That's why you need to think about it from your Particular emails and program and stuff, um, and, and compare it sort of message to message. And over over time, you can start to see um, 
you know, basically at, at sort of a ratio level, are, are people clicking on certain types of emails, uh, you know, m many more times uh, over, over other kind of emails and stuff like that. Um, so you can see here that, that just kind of by themselves looking at this, this is probably pretty meaningless and that's why you have to get down to kind of the, the nitty gritty on your program. But you can see here uh, 1.56 clicks per clicker, meaning that, um, that the average person clicks in essence one and a half times, if, if you will, and the top quartile heading towards um, you know, uh, al almost two, a little bit, but under that 1.8. And so you can see even the sort of the lower performers are not that significantly lower. So again, it's kind of a, a nuanced niche metric, but um, something to, to consider and think about depending on kind of your, your program and the industry you're in. So let's move on to the dreaded list churn. So I'm going to look at hard bounces and unsubscribes. So hard bounces, uh, as you can see here, um, the the average across uh, our client base that participated was a 2.1% hard bounce rate, right? And typically, you know, a lot of companies and a lot of other studies I've seen are, are you know, a, a bit higher than that in the in the 3%, 4% range, stuff like that. But but you know, 2% range on average is 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 you know actually not not bad. And you can see the the top. Uh, quartile performers are, are at a tenth of a percent. These are people that are, you know, for whatever reason, they are keeping their their list incredibly clean, doing incredible list hygiene, and 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 probably, you know, what drives some of the math is that is that they're emailing people on a on a high frequency level because that kind of removes the the people that have uh, you know changed their address and things like that, and so it keeps that kind of low. But but obviously, keeping your hard bounce rate low is, is really, really critical because if you look down here at the bottom number, the 7.3%, that bottom quartile, you know, if you, if you look at that over the course of a year, right, um, the impact on your list is, is huge, right? I mean, that's three and a half times what kind of the, the, the average is, if you will. And, and if you think about the cost and energy and effort you go into putting into building your list, you know, if you've got, um, you know, significantly higher hard bounce rate, you're going to have to, in essence, you know, kind of almost replace your entire list every year or 18 months or something like that. So really important to, um, you know, focus on list hygiene and keep the, your hard bounce, hard bounce rate as low as possible. And again, if, if, you know, if you're well beyond, you know, if you're above, let's say, 5% or something like that, I would say you probably have, have some issues. And if you're below 2%, then, you know, you're doing, doing pretty darn well. Unsubscribe rate. So um, as you can see here, unsubscribe rate uh, on average is uh, about 0.3%. So again, this is this is per mailing and simply means that um, you know by whatever means, but typically clicking the the good old unsubscribe link um, is three out of a thousand, if my math is correct there in my head, of, of people are are unsubscribing um, per percent, if you will, on on average. And, and obviously the you know the top quartiles are way 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 uh, below that at, at two per ten thousand if my math is is correct so um, again you know sort of pretty pretty significant difference but then on the the bottom quartile um, they're at one out of a hundred right so you can see pretty pretty uh, significant ranges uh, uh, across this as far as um, where, where companies are at on, on the unsubscribe rate. And again, just like the bounce rates, pretty, uh, pretty much a no-brainer of why you want to um, keep, you know, keep your unsubscribe rate low. All right, so that's uh, the process, review of, of some selected metrics. Again, the idea was not to go through in, in detail of everything we looked at and by every kind of slice and dice geography. So we just, we just don't have enough time. We're already almost 40 minutes into it, so I wanted to make sure that I just, you know, got enough of, of hopefully kind of the more interesting metrics and, and then you'll, you'll understand kind of the process and, and when you get the actual um, report, it sort of makes more sense to you and you know how to sort of apply it. Um, and then, so then the, the next section is, uh, as I sort of started in my sermon to sort of begin with, so what does all of this mean? Now that I have some flavor of some averages and top quartiles, I have a sense of maybe where my, my program comp compares, what, what can I do with this? So 
Lauren, sort of uh, nine kind of steps or tips of, of, of how to think about all of this and put it in perspective and, and to put it to work. And, and the first thing, and again, this is a little bit of a, of a sermon, but it's something I've talked and spoken and written about a, a, a lot over the last 10, 12 years, is, is the idea that, that the metrics I just walked through are, are what I refer to as kind of you know, process metrics, right? These are, these are metrics that, that really don't tell you if your program is successful or not, right? Now, maybe unless you know, sort of you're a, you're a publisher and, and you're selling, you know, uh, uh, ad, uh, you know, banner ads and stuff, your emails, then, then open rate maybe is, is, and that's something you convey to, to your, your customers and stuff, then maybe it is. But for, you know, 80, 90, 95% of us, most of these metrics just, they don't tell you, and they don't tell your boss, your CMO, or the CEO, or anybody else if, if, the, if the, the program actually delivered success, right? What they do tell you and where they are helpful and, and add value is in this sort of diagnostic element, right? They help you understand, you know, for example, if, if, uh, if your open rates are um, actually, you know, doing their job and driving uh, good opens, getting, getting people to, you know, um, to sort of open the email, obviously, and how and how that compares to other companies, it also helps you understand. You know, again, as as I sort of ended there on, on list churn, you know, do we have uh, list list hygiene issues, and do we have too many people unsubscribing? And so, what does that mean? That probably, if we go back and and see that that our unsubscribe rate is off the chart, is that let's look into that, and it might mean that what we're delivering is not what people signed up for. Uh, and that didn't meet their expectations, or maybe we've you know quadrupled the the frequency of emails that we're sending since people um, opted in, and things like that. And again, you know things like offers and stuff like that. So again, you know the point is is that when you're benchmarking and compare these, don't stop at these metrics. Don't think about these as aha, uh -huh, you know I've I've beaten the average, or I'm I've really done well. I'm in that top quartile. Is this is just on that kind of process side. Is you know the next step is really you need to focus on on you know things like revenue and conversions and leads and and the things that are really driving your business and, and measuring the success of your email program. So the the second thing now that we've gotten the you know kind of the big asterisk around out of the way about uh, uh, about these sort of numbers is you know is 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 you know do read the study do look at the metrics and do compare your program. Uh, in in all these different areas um, to to the metrics in the study and again by by geography by industry by kind of you know the different slices and stuff and 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 spend some time on it and get a sense of you know sort of how how do we compare and and in particularly how do we compare to you know maybe sort of the the top performers. Thirdly, um, and I and I use this for those of you that have been to the UK. I presented uh, a version of this to uh, our clients over in, in the UK a couple months ago. So, hence the uh, the takeoff on uh, mind the. In other words, now that you know you sort of you know looked at the study, looked at the metrics. Let's let's see how far we're off. And it and the, and the likelihood is the chances that you might. Um, you know, be a, a good performer or above average performer or even the top quartile in in some metrics, say, you know, open or click rate or something like that or some other metric, but but maybe actually, a, you know, a, a, a per, you're performing below average or something like that in, in another area. So, that, you know, part of the idea is to understand is, you know, where, where are we succeeding and, and where are we really off the mark, um, which you know kind of ultimately leads to you know sort of where you should be where you should be focusing on things. So when you understand those those gaps, you know sort of the really that this number four is probably the most important slide, uh, if you will, of, of this entire uh, webinar presentation. Is the idea is that ultimately what are you going to do with this, right? And so now that you understand, you know, kind of how you're comparing and, and across those different slices and stuff. You know whether you're performing well or or not, right? The idea is to, is to use those benchmarks to get sort of bigger budget and resources, right? So if you're doing well in a particular area, use that to um, you know basically say how, how well you're doing and and to and to use that as a means to lobby for you know kind of more budget and resources to continue improve in those areas that that you're already performing. To say you know in in essence. 
you know, we're doing this with minimal budget. Just think how we could do in this area if, if we actually had greater budget and resources. And, and, and by the same token, if, if you're, you know, if you're, if you've got a, you know, 6% hard bounce rate and your unsubscribe rate is off the chart or whatever it is, you know, clearly there's some issues and maybe you need, you know, the help of a, uh, you know, deliverability consultant or something like that, right? So where, where there's those, you know, poor performance areas, again, use that to say, and lobby your boss and stuff for you know we're really really not making the mark uh, in, in this in this area and so I need need some some help and budget and resources and that type of thing. But what underlies all of that and really what what your boss is going to probably come come back to you with uh, is you know if I'm going to give you more budget and resources and stuff I want to see you know big big payback I don't want to just see you go from uh, you know uh, 20% open rate to a 21% open rate, right? I want to see some pretty significant movement and stuff. So when you think about that and you think about communicating it and asking for those those resources and things like that, think about where you can really move the move the needle, right? And and again, and when you think about uh, you know, let's say you you focus on improving the click to open rate, that ultimately you know, show in, in your, you know, your spreadsheet and, and your, when you're, you know, going for that additional budget and resources, how that actually translates to revenue, for example, if you're a retailer or something. So really focus on the, those areas that, that really are going to have that, that, that big, big payback. And it could be, you know, a, a small part of your program, like, like cart abandonment or something like that. But, but find that area that what I refer to as fulcrum, find that really big area um, before you focus on sort of tweaking things here and there. So don't just run to like, you know, tweak your subject lines or something like that. Um, number six is, is and, and you know, this slide is, is sort of originally intended for, for presentation to Silver Pop clients, but it applies to, to everybody that, you know, uh, one of the things that we see across not just email and marketing automation software is across all software is that, that most users of software only use a small percentage of, of the features and capabilities. And that, that applies just as well in sort of the, you know, the email and marketing automation space. So, you know, regardless of the, you know, kind of the provider you use, um, you know, make sure you're using all those capabilities that, that can really take your program to the next level. Because at the end of the day, that's a lot of of what's going to be the difference between the bottom performers and the average and and the people that are top performers, right? They're using dynamic content. They're using sort of marketing automation features and putting, you know, recipients into, um, you know, drip programs and, and automated series and stuff based on their behavior. You know, they're using building great, um, you know, web forms and progressive forms that, in, you know, are pulling in content. They're using you know, web tracking and testing and, and greater personalization. And they're using all these tools that are out there and available to really take the, the program to the next level. It, you know, it's it's not just about, ooh, you know, putting a, a, a bigger button in my emails or, or you know, get, putting symbols in the subject line or, or things like that. It's really about using the technology that enables you to really take that sort of leapfrog uh, approach to the next level. And then I would say, get to the point of sort of tweaking and optimizing. In other words, you know, don't tweak and optimize first. Focus on those big things, those really big, humongous things. And then once you, you know, once you've, you know, doubled your clicked open rate and increased your, uh, you know, revenue by by 20% or whatever it is, then you can go back and start to tweak all the little, you know, kind of smaller elements of, of your program and, and continue to optimize. But but really, it's, 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 it's for, sort of very tempting to start with the easy stuff first. And, and I would really argue to start with sort of the, the, the big things and really see where you can make a, an impact there. Um, and then compare again. So then come back, you know, six, nine, 12 months or whatever it is later and see, have, you know, how far have you moved the needle? Are you, have you now gone from below average to you're in the top quartile uh, area again? And then, you know, and then use that um, to, you know, go back, uh, if you will, to, to your boss and, um, Celebrate and and use that great performance to you know to get a raise, get promoted, and and take a much deserved vacation on your your favorite beach of of choice. And you know you, you, this is obviously meant to be uh, uh, somewhat light and stuff, but actually it, it it actually can be true. We've you know we we have a client that did a presentation at our 
uh, client summit in in Atlanta a couple of months ago that that actually did get uh, you know promoted and a, and a raise by moving to you know more sophisticated use of, of of marketing automation features and stuff and it allowed her to basically prove to management that she could handle um, other programs and a broader range because the email was was you know almost to that point of kind of set it and forget it so while it's tended to be a bit light it actually can come true and that's that's really the point right is at the end of the day I'll leave you with on this note is you know use use this data to really figure out how you can take your program to the next level and it, it can pay uh, dividends not only to the performance of your program for your company but but you as an individual employee and in your career um, so with that, um, let's move into kind of the, the final uh, aspect here before I hand it um, back to Stacy for a couple of uh, a quick final notes, and then we'll go into Q&A. Um, just again, uh, you know, the, the slides from today will be distributed to you in a, in a couple of days. And uh, as part of that, and I'm uh, assuming uh, I forgot to, to talk to my marketing folks about this, but I'm assuming that we're going to include a link in the follow-up email as well with uh, so you can download that full study report and and lastly even though many of you are, are not silver pop clients just just in general um, don't hesitate to email me tweet me etc like uh, of what are the kind of metrics you would you would like to see and and if possible we'll incorporate that in in the future in the, in the future reports and with that Stacy I'm going to hand it to you to run through a couple of closing notes and then we'll go to Q&A Sounds good. If you don't mind, Lauren, I think we might start with the Q&A. How does that sound? All right. We'll 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 do that, and we'll go to the Q&A slide, okay? <laughs> Perfect. The first question um, is about unsubscribe rates. Um, someone chatted, our unsubscribe rate has been increasing recently. What are the likely causes, and what can we do to reverse this trend? Yeah, thanks, Stacey. Great, great, great question, and, and you know, the – uh, monitoring the unsubscribe rate is one of those, you know, sort of list churn metrics that, that's really, really important, right? Because it 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 can it imply many things uh, about your program. So, you know, the the first thing is is, you know, kind of go back and 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 see if you can see where it started, right? Has it been just a you know a slow gradual uh, increase over the last couple of years or something, or is it is it something where you know if you looked on kind of a chart you could map it to a time in history where where you did other things right so maybe you started getting uh, more aggressive on your your list acquisition sources right so you used to just you know have a, a link on on your your website for people opt in but then at at some point you started giving away you know iPads and things like that or whatever it is or start doing a lot lot more sweepstakes or things like that so it you know the first thing is is to kind of go back and see if you can if if there is kind of a point where it, you started to see it go up and so the driver of that could be again uh you know something like the, the more aggressive list acquisition sources it could you know did you change your frequency did you go from you know sending uh two times a week to four times a week or something like that did you uh, or, or did you change from from names? Did you go from using a company name to uh, you know people's names because you saw a competitor do, yeah, do that and you thought that was the cool thing to do? Or did your subject lines get more aggressive? Um, you know things like that. So try to try to you know sort of find out if if there is um, a direct correlation with which things that you've you've done with your program and you kind of map it to that. If it's been just kind of a long, slow, gradual increase, that's obviously a, a little more difficult. It just could be that that in general, you know, your content is just, you know, it's not getting any better and 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 just sort of, a you know, as your list gets bigger, right, or over time that just, you know, it's kind of almost a mathematical thing that, that, that there's nothing sort of, you know, earth shattering that you can point to, but but just that that as the list gets bigger, more and more people are unsubscribing, and and you know just um, uh, you know and which which would cause you to kind of in essence rethink the whole program. Sorry, I that was a really long long answer, but um, but that's it's not an easy one. No, that that was great. So switching gears um, from unsubscribes to open rates, um, but also a, a question about a, a challenge. Our open rates are considerably lower than the averages that you discussed. What are some key things we can do to increase them? Right, great. So, um, uh, 
you know, the, 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 the first thing I guess to sort of understand is, is, you know, kind of what, it, what is the, the, the sort of the goal and, and, and role of, of the program overall, right? And so let's say if sort of the average are at, 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 at um, 20% and you're getting, uh, let's say, 10% open rates, right? So you're, you know, you're, you're about half of what uh, industry averages. So, so I think that, you know, the first thing is obviously to compare to some of the other verticals and things like that to see if, if you know, you're even sort of further off or, or actually sort of closer to that average. But again, I think you know it's sort of similar to the last question. It comes back to sort of doing some some diagnostics, and is this something that again you know they were 25 percent three years ago, and they've just kind of you know go down a point or two points every year, and that that's you know not not that uncommon, right? Um, and and so I guess it's you know sort of important to kind of look at what that degradation has has been, or has it been you know kind of something that 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 that's more recent and so part of it is you know is again understanding how old your database and and um, you know how long in essence people have, have, have been on there because if you have people that have been on your list you know for eight years or whatever it is it's you know it's it's not uncommon for those people just to sort of go inactive and, and become unengaged so part of it could be simply that that um, you know, your your actually offers in creative or something really good. It's just the fact that you have people that have been on there so long and have, and have disengaged. And so the first thing I would say is, is is to slice your metrics by those that are active and those that are inactive, right? Because then that'll that'll start to help you understand if it's just you know if it's a if it's a broad issue or if if you're seeing where you have you know 40 50 percent or 60 percent which is very common these days of your list is completely inactive right and so to to start to sort of slice slice up your metrics a little bit to understand you know where your actives are at so if your actives are only at at 20 percent then you know i would say overall you're you're you know you probably uh, are, are having just some real content issues, right? That you, what you really need to focus on is is sort of the core value proposition that, that you're delivering because people just are, are not responding at um, at a great level. Great. Um, so here's an interesting question about smartphones. Um, what do you think is the impact on open rates from the growing percentage of recipients using smartphones? Great questions. Yeah, I've written uh, a number of articles recently about, about um, you know, sort of optimizing for mobile and everything. So the first, you know, kind of the first thing to under, understand about mobile is, is is that where, you know, a year or two ago, a lot of people were saying, well, it's not my demographic, it's not impacting me that much, et cetera. It's, you know, it's this group, it's that group. The reality is, is that pretty much no matter whom your market is, even if it's, you know, senior citizens or whatever, you know, there's a vast percentage of of your recipients that are that are, you know, using their smartphones and and, and you know, email is typically the number one uh use of a smartphone. And, and so, you know, there's there's some numbers again, it's sort of average numbers, but that about a third of, of the average marketers uh, subscribers now are are you know, engaging with your emails on on their smartphone device. So I guess the first sort of point I would make is just that it's not something that you can ignore and slough off. It's that it's pretty much impacting everybody, and it's growing. And it for a lot of a lot of companies, it's going to be about 50% of your subscriber base next year um, will act, will actually be you know interacting with with your email on on a mobile device. The the other thing is that, that a lot of people used to used to think about um, you know kind of you know Blackberries and things like that and they weren't um, uh, you know the operating system wasn't wasn't optimized well for HTML and stuff like that and the reality is is that you know the the vast majority of smartphones being sold today you know uh, uh, iPhones and Androids and, and the like uh, all render HTML incredibly well and many of them. The images are on by default, so um, you know it is with with the iPhone, which is what I have as my example. So the reality is 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 that you know a lot of these emails are actually looking better if if they're even modestly designed well on your iPhone than they are 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 on your desktop. And if you just sort of click, you know, people are just sort of scrolling through them quite simply. Um, you know, it isn't necessarily having a negative 
impact on on your open rates from kind of a you know measurability monitoring perspective like maybe it did a couple of years ago when when many of the smartphones you know delivered emails in uh, you know, a, a text or, un, you know, not optimized HTML without images and things like that. So I think, you know, that's a long convoluted answer, but it's a complex topic is, is, is that, it, you know, I think it's kind of level setting, if you will, on, on, on open rates these days. And, and we don't have time to sort of go through how to optimizing it, but there are several things that I'm going to be doing a whole series on a blog series around optimizing for mobile but but the short answer is is that it's here it's real and and to make sure that you are optimizing uh, your emails for increasingly for mobile devices so I think we have time for one last question Lauren and then we can get to, to some of those closing slides um, okay. that, that you pulled up earlier um, this is about the high open rate um, that that folks notice for banks um, and just kind of your thoughts on, on why that might be, and do you think it's because um, it's more likely to be a transactional email versus a marketing email? Yes, great, great, great question. I, I touched on that a little bit before, and again, this is just you know sort of Lauren's uh, uh, you know sort of theories and assumptions. I don't I don't have actual sort of facts to back it up, but but part of it is um, th that, and this is. Um, sort of too much information, if you will, but but Silverpop has a, a separate sort of transactional email platform that this did not include. So, and most of our our clients use that that system for their transactional. So the first part I would say is that I don't think, you know, m many of those emails were actually true transactional emails. Um, and but but sort of putting that aside, I think you know again a lot of them are simply that. Um, like for example, I bank with with Wells Fargo, and I, you know, that's the only bank's emails I get. I don't subscribe to five different, you know, banks' emails, right? Whereas, on a retailer, I might subscribe to 20 different um, or 30 or whatever different retailers, even though I only regularly shop with a couple of them. The point being is, is I think that the, is that. You know, with with banks, they typically, I would say, you know, the majority of the subscribers are true sort of customers, and your active customers, and you know, and you're receiving information from the bank. You know, and, and they, many of them could be these notifications, which which may be part of what what the the question was really about, not so much transactional, but the idea that, for example, I get a lot of these emails that are. Um, you know your your um, account is low or or you know whatever it is those kinds of notifications so some of them could be those kind of you know informational notifications that that are are important that 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 people want to open so I think um, th that that's my my best shot Stacy that a lot of them really are that they're you know the be because they're designed just kind of for customers and are less sort of promotional people kind of feel compelled to 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 open them and See what see if I'm overdrawn, right? <laughs> Never. Never, no, of course not. <laughs> well, great points, and I hope that we we got to uh, most of your questions. I think so. Um, hopefully, um, that uh, that seemed helpful to everybody. Um, wanted to go ahead and just kind of close things up. We have just a couple of, of final slides here. Um, we certainly hope that you enjoyed the webinar, um, as you know, brought to you by Silver Pop. Um, Silverpop is the only digital marketing technology provider that unifies marketing automation, email, mobile, and social. Um, and the solution really gives marketers the ability to leverage customer behavior to drive revenue. If you'd like to learn more about our product and see it in action, we would encourage you to attend one of our monthly product demos. This month, the email marketing focus demo will be held on September 25th. And that's actually next month, but it's almost September, so pretty close. And the marketing automation focus demo on September 27th. You can register for either one or both of these demos, or you can just view a five-minute demo at your own time uh, by visiting silverpop.com. Also at silverpop.com in the marketing resources section, you'll find more information about future webinars. You can view recordings from any of our previous webinars, and you can also access a number of white papers and blog entries on a wide variety of digital marketing topics. And you can also access slides from some of our previous presentations um, on these and other topics um, at slideshare.net slash silverpop. And of course, you can always find us on Twitter and Facebook. So thanks again, Lauren, and thank you to everybody who joined us today. Um, and just one final reminder that you will receive a copy of today's presentation next week.
Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Stacey. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.